Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Fly. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. On this episode, we'll be sitting down to speak with a couple. And before I misrepresent or call people out in a manner they don't want to be, let's start it. Um, you guys aren't entitled to use your given name if you don't want to, but I do need something to address you by so that people know who I'm talking to when I'm asking these questions. So, ladies first. Ro. Jace. There we go. All right. Ro, we're going to start with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we follow each other on Twitter, so I'm mm-hmm. fairly familiar with your personality and some of your... <laughs> So, you know, my wholesomeness. Yes, your wholesomeness. So (laughs) I'm going to ask questions that I may know the answers to. But Mm -hmm. again, it's not for me. It's for the people listening. Some of them might be ignorant, but it'll help clarify some things for people who have these questions. And, you know, I'm sure I know I've seen you answer a few of them. So (laughs) (laughs) So I know it's not even just for you because, you know, other couples like this do experience the same questions and hopefully they won't have to, you know, answer Mm -hmm. these questions. Maybe this will help. So I'm going to start with that. Um, Happy belated birthday, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, Yeah, Pisces season or whatever. Thanks. (laughs) Um, Okay, so seeing as this podcast is really about, you know, being LGBT and Caribbean, um, I want to ask every guest that comes on basically, you know, where they're from, get a feel for their identity and just like their culture just to, you know, kind of get, who they are as a sense as far as background goes. Mm-hmm. So where are you from in the Caribbean? Well, my mama and daddy. No, I'm joking. <laughs> my mom and dad are from Haiti. I was born here, so I have Haitian culture in me. Okay, okay, cool. Have you ever lived there? Have you ever visited? Um, I visited when I was like 12. I don't want to go back. That's okay. <laughs> it was a nice experience. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've never lived there. Okay, do you speak Creole? Horribly, yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's there. <laughs> Are you really in touch with the culture? Like, do you guys like? Well, for the most part, yeah, that I like to think of. But when I meet like the true true zoes, I don't know nothing. <laughs> okay, so like, do you listen to Zook music and all that stuff? I actually hate Zook oh. and Kompa. I hate oh. it. Like, I'm like the biggest traitor ever because if you put on Kompa or Zook, I'm like, turn that shit off. But if you put on like dance hall soca, oh. like I'm all there. So. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so no soup jumu for you, New Year's No, 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 no. I didn't say, I didn't say <laughs> no soup jumu. You got to keep it, you know, keep it oh, to okay. my roots. Okay. But I said the music, oh. you turn that shit off. <laughs> okay. Because it's just like so slow and baby, I love you. I want to hug you. I don't like all that. I like more of the soca and the dance hall route, you know? Okay, okay. Do you um, like identify as a member of the LGBTQ community? Yes. What letter do you identify as? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> pick a letter do you do you identify <laughs> what letter. do you, well, pick a letter you know y LGBT. for yes why for yes okay we're going with yes then <laughs> you had a letter so I gave it ruined your life wow <laughs> that's why we left it at yes <laughs> wow there there we go okay but so. no I would identify as a lesbian but you know I fell in love with this purple shirt motherfucker this person here this man so um it turned into you know now i'm queer okay okay queer yeah that's why i I like to add the q on there for Mm -hmm. questioning queer etc so there's that um are you (laughs) it's funny that's one of the questions (laughs) um are you out Yes. to your parents yes but they're caribbean they like to play like they don't know like mm. perfect example today they were like why do you go to the gym way in the morning and then you don't come home till late at night why would, why would i go to the gym and then go home and then go back to work at the gym that i work at it was like because you got a boyfriend and i was like first and foremost i mean technically i'm gay but second of all why would i go all the way to the gym for a nigga like no that's okay <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, does your whole family know, or is it just like your immediate family? Immediate family. Okay. I don't really, outside of being gay or queer, I don't speak to like people that's not immediate family that much. Okay. So, I really don't feel like there's a reason for them to know. Okay. Uh, How did your parents know. take you coming out? When did you come out? Um, I came out when I was 21. Okay. And I was just randomly staying with my sister because I felt like it. 
And they were just like, well, we heard that you moved out because you were gay. And it was my birthday. So I'm feeling ballsy. So I was just like, yeah, what you going to do? So they were just like, oh, okay. And they put holy water on my forehead. They prayed. Oh. And I went right back to my sister's house. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. Sadly, I've heard I've heard stories like this before. At least they didn't dunk you and everything else. But nah, they just did a little holy water thing and prayed, and I was like, "Y'all done?" <laughs> and then I went back to my sister's house, and nothing else was said about it afterwards. That was it. Okay, that's. Do you still live with your sister? Or are you with your no, parents? No, I'm you still live? with my parents. Okay, you know, good right. old Zoe life, staying there till I'm 38. You know? Yeah, I understand. I gotta keep you know. it strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you get married and then you move out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so Jace, are you Caribbean? I my my dad's father is from Barbados. Okay, but my dad he doesn't really talk about his family okay. in that side, so I haven't really been exposed to it. Um, I'm kind of envious, though, um, being like a black American, Mm -hmm. not having those same sort of roots that other, you know, people across the dysphoria have, because it's like, you guys having an Independence Day, it's a culture. (laughs) You have Independence Day, too? I was, we were independent when America (laughs) had their Independence Day, so it's kind of trash, but. Okay. We raise as black power. That's what we call you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay <laughs> so you don't really have any like cultural experience really as far as barbados goes no not really okay have you ever visited no me and my sister are trying to go because apparently we have a lot of family there okay all right well that, that does suck <laughs> that does suck what do you identify as a trans male um just as a man, really, the world says I'm trans, so I just kind of go with it. But um, I'm not ashamed to be trans, but I just say I'm a man. I just exist in the world as a man. Okay. Um, when did you first realize that things weren't all the way there, I should say? Like, when did you start feeling this way? When, Like, what age, if you can remember? I would say probably four I was really young, um, but my parents always kind of like accepted like my gender, like identity. Mm-hmm. Well, not like identity, more like expression. Because okay. when you're young, like gender doesn't exist in binaries. So it's just like I wore boy clothes and they would buy me boy clothes and they would buy me, you know, the boys happy meal at McDonald's. And there was and no Hot dispute Wheels. or anything? Just... No. I was the first born and I was just like oh. the light of my mom's eye. So whatever oh, okay. I wanted to do, like she was just like. Here, do it. You want to do that this? Do it. That is amazing. Um, and then I guess I kind of identify as a boy, really, like, middle school when you have to pick. Like, when the tomboy fades, it's supposed to phase out, and, mm-hmm. like, puberty comes and stuff like that, then it's like, oh, you have to be one or the other. Mm-hmm. So when did you decide to start transitioning? It's been almost a year Officially, I've been on testosterone. Okay. Um, I wanted to start when I was younger, but um, I never had, like, the words to express that or really the boldness or the balls uh-huh. to say that out loud. Um, so last year was official. Okay. Yep. That's awesome. Does it really make you aggressive like it says on Twitter? Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. In the beginning, because uh, my hormones were really out of whack. Mm-hmm. So it's just like... Either I wanted to fight or I wanted to fuck. Like, it was, that was it. Like, if it was one or the other. Like, so, and especially with the kind of work I do. Like, I'm in tech. So, people, like, really ballsy sometimes. Like, they want to talk to you crazy. Yeah. Especially if it's a guy. Like, I take this badge off and I'll beat your ass right now. Like, so, but now I'm, I'm a lot calmer because my hormones are just, like, so used to now. it now and it's leveled out. Right, right. Okay, cool. So did you guys know each other before you started transitioning? Yep. Really? She didn't know, though, because she doesn't pay attention. Oh. I didn't know this, man. Because she <laughs> kept curving me, that's why. Oh. Apparently that's what it was. <clears throat> okay. So there was never a discussion about, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. It's just, hi, I'm a man and I like you and that's what it is, basically. Well... He told me that he already was, like, saying it on social media. I just never paid attention. Okay. I just, you know, just 
being having a blind eye. But um, when we went on our first date and the stupid ass waiter wanted to misgender people and he said something about it and I'm like, wait, what? Like mid burger. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and that kind of put two and two in my head together and I was like, oh, okay, let's go to. So, you know. What exactly was the context of like what the waiter said? Like how exactly? It was just something so small, but something so important. Like she turned to me and was just like, well, what do you have, ma'am, or something like that? Mm -hmm. And then when it came down to his turn, she kind of did the same. It was a guy waiter, actually. Wait. You don't remember? Uh, I don't well. know. Wow. Yeah, never mind. That's, go ahead. Go ahead. Wow. Ask the question. That's crazy. <laughs> My bad. It, it was, was a, a man. guy waiter. Yeah. Now, shut up. Don't act like you remember. <laughs> I do remember. Yeah. I got a good memory. Mm -hmm. I'm an elephant. Anyways, but yeah. So he kind of just turned and did the same thing to him. And that's when he made a comment on it. I don't remember the exact comment. It's probably something aggressive. The tea was pumping through my veins. I was like, what the fuck? I probably said something like that. Yeah. Between you saying what the fuck and looking at nigga titties, I don't know. But What? Um... <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and that's when he said a comment, like something like, I hate when people blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wait, what? And that's when I put two and two together. And I was like, oh. Okay, that's cool. Let me get these fries, though. So, okay, so male pronouns. That's it. Like, right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you plan on having surgery? Top, bottom, etc. Top surgery, yes. Bottom surgery, I don't know. It's up in the air. Um, it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. And insurance doesn't necessarily say it's yeah necessary. So they say, um, but. I'm aiming to get top surgery in October, so oh, wow. that'll be lit. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, my we'll gosh. See. You're not going to miss your boobs? No. <laughs> no. I always wonder that. Cause I'm like, no. Are you going to miss the boobs? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question. Do you use male restrooms? Yes. Do you use an STP device? Sometimes. Okay, so but urinals or stalls, either or, depending. I on usually thing. go to a stall. Okay. Um, STPs are really trash, honestly. Okay. Unless, like, you spend a whole lot of money. Mm. Um, and I don't want to walk around at work smelling pissy. Like, that's <laughs> a grown I ass man about smelling too. pissy. Like, <laughs> because like... if the shit start leaking down your pants, then what? Like, who does that? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, some of them are really good, but you got to spend, like, like five, like five hundred dollars, like a lot of money. I mean, some of them are cool. Like, um, you could get like the free free time. It doesn't work for me. Some people's like, oh, you got to practice. Like, who keep, who wants to keep doing that shit? <laughs> Every time you're home and you think about it, you're like, right. Let's but go. then I wind up piss all over the floor. <laughs> who wants to keep cleaning the floor? Like, cleaning that shit. <laughs> okay, all right. Have your feelings. <laughs> Oh gosh, how have your feelings about yourself and who you are changed since you started taking tea? I would say I'm probably definitely more confident um, and just bold in who I am. Um, when I was when I was speaking to people like before I started transitioning, it's like you're gonna walk with a certain like a different sort of confidence about mm -hmm. yourself. The same way, like the same someone else from a part of the community when they finally come out the closet or whatever yeah. the same sort of boldness and empowerment you have getting that monkey weight off yeah. your back and you could just walk in a world and exist without mm -hmm. explanation without fear without those sort of things so it just brings me this kind of boldness and like excitement just to be out in the world mm -hmm. without like hiding or like correcting people all the yeah. time it's like no 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 this is what it is and uh, just to be me without explanation is just, like, super dope. Okay. All right. Is this your first FTM relationship? Yes. Hmm. You look so happy. <laughs> Do I? Because I'm that nigga, you, that's why. I don't know about that. Say that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Say, okay. You know, like we discussed briefly earlier about the whole bi thing. You identify as a cisgendered woman, correct? Like, mm -hmm. born woman, identify as a woman, okay. Mm -hmm. And the lesbian mm -hmm. title was... I got kicked out of the community. <laughs> Listen, that was very interesting because... Nah, I thought that was a hot shit over there. Kick me out. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. So, 
Are you comfortable with that, though? Like, are you... As far as that quote-unquote label goes, because me personally, I don't really care for labels. If you like people, you like people. It's mm-hmm. whatever. But do you feel a way about that, like, the community looking at you a bit differently as you're in a relationship with an FTM? Um, I think in the beginning, they kind of did. Like, it was a lot of questions. Like, but I thought you was it. Mm-hmm. I'm out your business, okay? But now, because they kind of know who I am, mm-hmm. and they kind of, like, you know know how I act. They kind of just, like, you know, throw it over the shoulder. Okay, it is what it is. Um, I don't think it changed anything at all. Like, they just now know that... Well, they just now know that I would date a trans man, if you want to put it, but that's not a signal for all trans men to come my way. No, because ain't nobody before after me. <laughs> so Say that. No ain't no signal for no trans men to come my way, because, no, that's okay. I'm fine. I have my little dosage, <laughs> and... I'm okay now. Okay. Yeah. So, prior to this, mm-hmm. I I remember seeing things on Twitter where you said that you prefer more dominant woman studs, mm-hmm. dykes, all okay. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be your favorite word. <laughs> so, did that affect the way that you looked at Jace, like when you were approached or however it is that you guys first interacted um, n- no, because the first day I was under the impression that he identified as other. So okay. it wasn't until, like, we really, I literally did not feel know that for real that. I really I didn't, didn't know, know that. that a other? What the I fuck? didn't mean Check like that. Box, okay, other. listen. Male, female, listen, listen. other, creep. You exfoliated today, and I need you to stop. But, like you know, Erica. he gets what I'm trying to say. He just want to be no, a douchebag about it. But, um... Yeah, I didn't know that he was transitioning, anything like that. So honestly, the first day I was kind of like, not blindsided you by it, but it was binary. brought to. It was. I'm talking. To you. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just brought to the light that you know he was transitioning. But once I actually knew, it's funny because I already had a crush on somebody who was quote unquote trans man. So when I finally put two and two together, I didn't have a problem with it. So okay. I was like, oh, okay. So when you say other. I didn't mean to say other. Okay. No, because okay. So when you first for your met, I know. No, I fucked up. My bad. I'm a other too. I don't know. I don't know. We're all to get attacked. <laughs> so I'm trying to get to like the basis of okay. it. When you first were like first noticed him, since apparently you didn't notice him before, mm-hmm. did you think he was? She thought I was a dyke. She don't want to say it. She thought I was a dyke. That's so vulgar of you. I I'm, did think I'm, he was a dyke. Okay. Cause that, because that's what I'm wondering. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, you don't date men. So how is it that you ended well, up with, you know what I'm saying? That's why. That's originally why I, I asked if you knew nobody. before. I didn't want to offend nobody. But testosterone does change your appearance somewhat. Mm-hmm. So the Jace you see now is not the Jace that of I'm Of course. Mm-hmm. So he did have a little bit more feminine attributes that would let, and especially since I didn't pay attention to him that much, it would let me to believe <laughs> that he was a dyke. Okay. <laughs> but this like, was before, as of now. This was before I was passing. So okay. we, when me and her met, I was on testosterone for less than two months. Okay. So like my voice was not this. I mean, my voice was still kind of deep, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like this. Mm-hmm. Um, like this. <laughs> I didn't have any facial hair. Okay. My face was still like He's very a soft brown little thing. thing. Right. Okay. It, I look my mom says I look completely different. Like almost like she says she's recognized me, but like I look completely different. She had so to do a like, double take sometimes. Yeah. So I didn't look like this. My like shoulders wasn't this. <laughs> okay. I hope the trans plus umbrella comes for you. <laughs> They might, but who knows? <laughs> um, so, Jace, do you consider yourself then a heterosexual male? Yes. Okay. We're going to get some fun questions now. Where sex is concerned, okay? I'm about the pride. I'm how? <laughs> <laughs> Jace, how fluid are you with receiving pleasure? Receiving. I catch the head, but anything else besides that is, no, I'm not. Um, okay. Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. Because I was wondering, because I know some people aren't comfortable with receiving because they haven't had surgery or because they mm. still... 
Yeah, I, I understand that, but no. It feels good to fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you're completely comfortable with sex as far as receiving pleasure goes. Like. Yeah. I mean, it's because she makes me feel comfortable. Like before I have been touch me not in mm-hmm. plenty of relationships because I didn't feel comfortable. Okay. Um because I think especially for trans people really it's like if it's hard to, enough to feel comfortable in your own body when you look at it. So yeah. now if you don't feel vulnerable enough or comfortable enough mm-hmm. with someone who allows you to, you know, feel that vulnerability, it's probably not going to happen. So um, she's always made me feel comfortable and valid. So don't think so. <laughs> so like that wasn't an issue. OK, yeah. so this is basically your first heterosexual relationship, basically. Right, right, OK. Right. All right. Because I was, you know, previous questions would be, but prior to this, you were basically a touch me not. So. Right. Right. I mean, not in every relationship. I would say like maybe two other ones that have like been comfortable enough. But that was like, like my ex before we were in a relationship for maybe like four or five months before Mm -hmm. I let her touch me. What? Are you going to? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, That's where that came from. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, be tweet watching. <laughs> <laughs> Was that sweet heat weekend? She's about to have every every well, every one of my ex texts me. It's like that bitch talking about me. Oh my goodness. That's like, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um and a lot of them follow you too. Oh, that's crazy. Yes. You have fans. That's awesome. Okay, oh, so God. do you guys use strap-ons, toys, etc.? Yeah. And I well, suck dick. Plastic. Yes. Okay, because you yeah, cl- clarify that. <laughs> so, <well. laughs> She's talking to you. Why are you looking at me? Uh, you blinking too hard. I thought she had something to say. I'm blinking too okay. hard. Do you connect with that, Jace? Like when what? she's sucking plastic? Yeah. Like, does it actually do something for you? Like, yeah. do you feel, you know, like, connected to the experience? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, what's wrong with you? <laughs> okay. I just like fucking with you. <laughs> okay, so let's say y'all planning forever because, you know, we all getting old. This isn't you just play, play. She said forever. Oh, okay. Because I heard wedding. I'm sorry. I panicked. Oh, wow. <laughs> she was just asking me for a ring two days ago, so don't let this Rhoda Mango persona fool uh, you. Sometimes I want the ring, sometimes I don't. That's valid. Why, why don't you sometimes? You was going to ask me a question. <laughs> yeah, it's in It's in this. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh. I mean, it's just, you know, you say you want the ring, which I do want a ring. Promise rings. So I can do the little, you know, Tiffany Evans dance, everything. But um Girl, we is not sixteen. Well, we gonna act like it. <laughs> um, but you know, when you actually think about it, think about it, you'd be like, damn, we grown up. Like we adults now and stuff. Okay. So it's just kind of scary because it's not something you've done before. So if he would like really pop up, I'd be like, Whoa, yes, but damn, that's crazy. Okay. Do you guys plan on having children? Do you want to have children? Shouldn't say planning. Do you want to have children? Some, same thing with the ring. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Because um, I know how it is to grow up Caribbean. Mm-hmm. And you kind of inherit that bad, all those bad traits of being Caribbean. Mm-hmm. You're getting beat with extension cords. You're not beating my tree, kids. Tree branches, oh. sandals, all that. We so, just... you know, you have to, like, grow. I'm what the like, hell? I'm, talking to him. I'm not talking to him. His face But you right have now. to, like, you know, you have to grow and you have to learn that there's other ways to take care of kids how to discipline kids so yeah i talk a lot about unlearning the ignorance ingrained by being caribbean Mm -hmm. like as you get older and you learn that this was not okay Mm -hmm. so i definitely understand that do you want kids jace uh sometimes i think kids are a big responsibility but then i think i'd be a dope ass dad because like i'm about whatever like whatever and whoever you are i accept you as you are and i think in a way, I do want to help society by raising kids, like kids that are able to express themselves fully and be whoever and whatever they are. 
Especially if I have boys to unlearn that t- toxic masculinity oh, and that yes. bullshit that they perpetuate in the world. Um, because I had to unlearn it. Um, so to have kids, I think that would be dope. But those motherfuckers are expensive. <laughs> and I want a boat. So they're taken out of my boat fund. So on one hand, I do. Next minute, I want a boat. So Okay. Would you... Well, let's say you get the boat and the children. Um... <laughs> Would you tell them that you transitioned? Like, is that yeah. something that you would discuss? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, because I'm not ashamed of my experience. See, I would say I, I'm a man of trans experience. Like, okay, just because I wasn't a sign male at birth, I don't. I think that just gives me a different take on manhood and what it means to be a man. Um, my experience is not the same as a cisgender male and I'm not ashamed of my experience. So I think in any relationship I have that's meaningful, I think that's important for people to know because my story is just different. It doesn't make it worse, better, or it just makes it different. Okay. I completely understand that. Would you, hmm, would you say that being cisgendered is kind of easier in a way because i mean of course it's easy but the stereotypes that come with being a man like you just said unlearning those (laughs) toxic (laughs) masculinity like or should i say would it be harder because you know the difference of you know living your life as well shouldn't say living your life as but you being perceived as yes being yeah. perceived because i don't want to say a choice because it's right. not necessarily a choice it's a feeling and you acted on the feeling right. so do you think that being a man is easier for you being that you made the decision to live your life as such as opposed to concealing who you really are mm-hmm. versus being a, a cisgendered male that has to deal with society's idea of what you're supposed to be like in a way i think so but I know a lot of trans men that perpetuate that bullshit because... Society. Right. Because especially when you get to live stealth, mm-hmm. uh, for people that don't understand stealth, like you could just live as a man and you don't have to let anyone know that you're trans or what experience you had. Um, that's that's easy to walk around and just be this super macho like, and perpetuate this bullshit so you're more of a man. <laughs> It's, I think sometimes a lot of trans men overdo it versus a cis man because it's like... Proving I, themselves. Exactly. It's a dick measuring contest. Yes. Like, hey, I want to be perceived as this and I don't want to do anything outside what a cis man is supposed to do because I don't want me to be any different. You know yeah, what I'm they saying? don't want to so, question their gender, right, basically. Right, okay. So, in a way, I think it might be easier because I know what it's like to be treated as... A black female, and I don't want to perpetuate that to other black women because that shit is hard and you shouldn't deal with the bullshit. But then, in a way, for I think for a lot of trans men, they try to overcompensate sometimes because there's a lot of them that I meet, and I'm like, oh, like, what? What? What the fuck? <laughs> no, but it's just like, bro. Come on, like you, you, you should know better. Yeah. But a lot of people that know better or should know better don't. Okay. The same way, uh, a lot of black people perpetuate stereotypes that white people have on us, like yes. how cis heterosexual people do a lot of shit that white people do to black people to the LGBT community. Facts. We should know better since we are oppressed and marginalized, yes. but... You don't come through with this word. Because <laughs> I always talk about that. How is it that you, as a black person, a member of a marginalized society, an oppressed society, think it's okay for you to look down upon someone else that's basically in the same thing but on the other side of it? Just because you are different. Like, that's... It's the same thing as racism. You know, homophobia is in my opinion it's the same exact thing because you don't choose to be black you don't choose to be gay queer etc so that's always something that i'm just like y'all look dumb i think think it comes back to like when you're young right so it's always one bully on the playground and the bully's not beating your ass you're not gonna jump in front of the bully to say (laughs) hey stop 
Because then the bully's going to start beating your ass. So you're cool with the bully as long as they're not beating up on you. And as soon as you stand up and stand up for other people, you're making yourself a target. So I feel like a lot of people keep oppressing other people to feel feel in a way like the oppressor. A lot of people don't want to be free. A lot of people just don't want to be oppressed. That's true. I like that. Okay, let's look at you with the insight. <laughs> <laughs> Come through. My Roll grandma up, was a Black like Panther. You. Go there. For real, though? Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Huh. Look at you, a little revolutionary. <laughs> Power to Ro, you look like you have something to say. You okay? I don't have anything to say. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you got something smart to say. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Okay, I have a question. Have you ever dated a guy? No. Well... No. I guess when I was, like, little, like, when it doesn't Experimenting count. Experimenting days, like, adolescence. Yeah, like, in middle school, like, I was, had my little boyfriend, I guess. Okay. But, like, we just played basketball <laughs> and shared each other's sneakers. And my mom was like, it's like, you're the boy in a relationship. Sis, you should have seen it coming. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ro, have you ever dated a man prior to this? I mean, I had a few boyfriends or whatever. Oh, whatever. I, uh, you know, I would say I think I had at least four. Four to five boyfriends. I was young, 16, thought and bopping the little Haiti, you know. Oh, okay. Hot and bothered. When did you actually realize that you were a lesbian identified or? Um, It's when I went off to college and um, I was just minding my business and boom, a lesbian. <laughs> like just like that. Lesbian up here. <laughs> what? <I did. laughs> It did. And it stole my phone and my phone number. And I was like, that was ballsy. And then stole your phone number? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yo. What what college did you go to? <laughs> I went to Nova. And oh. So yeah. That's down the street. But yeah, I mean, it's funny because um one of my best friends, she's gay, but I didn't know at the time. Um, and I just happened to be gay. So when I actually went to Nova with her, you know, it just no, that's when it popped. I was like, "Bitch, you gay? Bitch, me too! Yay! Come on, turn up!" So, um, turn up and she turn just kind of like helped introduce me into the lifestyle. I mean, but prior to that, like I would say, twelve grade year before I went to Nova and everything, I considered myself bi. I was just like, eh. I told one of my boyfriends, I was like, eh, "I think I kind of like girls too." You know, you know how niggas act. Mm-hmm. Like that's cool with me, dude. <laughs> yeah, of course it's cool with you. But you know, after a while, I just started to realize like. I don't really like boys that much. I like girls more. And eventually it came to like, I totally like girls. And now it was like, boom, rainbows and cloud nine. And- oh, gosh. You used to be at the nine? Hmm? You used to be at the nine? You used to be, she just went a month ago. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, fuck <laughs> Shut up. Oh, wow. I don't participate in those activities. Oh, okay. I got a man. <laughs> what that mean? You can still party? You can't have friends? <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I've been a cloud yeah. nine and ooh. so I had a few boyfriends. So okay, no. Were you comfortable accepting that though? That you know, hey, I don't really like boys anymore. This was fun while it lasted. Um, well, my, my dad's he's Caribbean and he's a pastor. Yeah, I was gonna ask if religion so, played a part in any of this. Not really, because I had such. Uh, influence from him like you gotta go to church and you gotta do this you gotta do that that i just was a free spirit i was a rebellious person so when that happened i didn't think it was like oh my god what's my parents gonna think i was like it's lit <laughs> so you just openly embraced it when you realized you're just like fuck that we out here oh wow and so especially where it happened it happened in college at dorm so i'm basically by myself Okay. There's no you have point. to worry about nobody yeah, watching your. I gotta have bitches in my dorm. Hey. But you know, like I just had that freedom, even though they stayed like you know forty five minutes away. I had that freedom where it really didn't mind, matter to me. It didn't process in my mind that you know, like, oh, what are my parents gonna think? Okay. Had it happened at home, I'd probably be like, I understand that. You know? It's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, I'm not really... kinda, yeah. Okay, that's pretty dope. Mm. <laughs> what you gotta say? Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know if you guys have any questions for me or anything. I I honestly feel like, you know, I'm going to be having these interviews with different, different people, like whether it's, you know, FTM, MTF, lesbian, whatever, the whole, the whole rainbow, the whole spectrum. Um, 
trying to get some other Caribbean people in here to mm. do this, but I feel like it's harder to find Caribbean people from like the smaller islands because I feel like they're not as out because of being Caribbean. Like I was surprised I found as many Jamaicans as I did. My ignorance, but at the same what? time, there's a lot of gay Jamaicans. I mean, it's ignorant for me to say but I know it because I know other Jamaicans that are gay. Mm-hmm. And I have like a few people that I know that are involved in like community activities in Jamaica mm-hmm. that, you know, are participating to spread the word and shed equality and all that fun stuff. So being able to find people, it's like I'm kind of on a scavenger hunt. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, there's some local people. There's some people. Like, I feel like a lot of them are like in New York, <laughs> yeah. and like you know, <laughs> yeah. That's exactly where they at. Yeah, it's like a lot of them are in New York. There's some down here, but I mean, I remember a few episodes back. I talked about like being inclusive and like being able to like you said you like dance hall and soca and stuff like that, and you're still gay. And I personally like I don't really like American music that much, so that's why I'm like I ain't been to Cloud Nine in a minute mm-hmm. because Cloud Nine has like you know the commercial reggae music, and I'm just yeah. like yeah, this was fun, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now we're back to juke music and yeah. you know bopping and all that mm-hmm. stuff, and I'm like yeah. So has that been a problem for you, like finding, or does it not matter? Do you would you like to have more experiences where you can be openly gay and Caribbean at the same time as far as parties go. Well, it's actually events. funny because I wanted to start like, you know, a gay juve and stuff like that, mm. like gay fets. But um, I was going through Eventbrite and they actually have like a gay juve come going on like next two weeks. And I was like, you motherfuckers stole my idea. But that's true because it's like you kind of have to turn down your gay. You got to turn off your gay when you're ready to go to do carnival or fet, stuff like that. Like, and it sucks because like, I don't want to dance, but I want to dance with the bitches. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have your penis all in my back and all up mm-hmm. in my costume and stuff. So it kind of sucks. <laughs> it's true, you get though. On Instagram it's say true. <clears throat> so it kind of sucks because, you know, you can't equally do both. Um, for me, I haven't had that problem yet. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm crazy or something mentally wrong with me, but I always. Yes. Uh, and I always attract somebody who happens to be Caribbean. Okay. I think he is honestly the first person who is Caribbean, but like more African American that I've dated in a very long time. Okay. So, you know, I don't know anything about sauce and all that other <laughs> stuff. And he likes Haitian food, like legume and stuff, but. But she can't cook. Podcast is over. Thank you. <laughs> 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 You know, never too old to learn. But, um, Can you cook? Yes. Oh. I'm the full package. You're welcome, bro. Say that. You can Anyways. teach her. He's too lazy. I, I don't, I'm not Haitian. Google recipes, cookbooks. No. Ask her mom. Oh, she. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking her mom nothing. That lady scares me, and I never met her. You never met? I was going to no. ask that. Have She's you, you scary. You guys haven't met each other's parents? No, her mom looks scary. I met scary. his mom and his aunt, spoke to his grandma, met his sister, talked to his homeboy. That's so they know brother. me. But we haven't got to that conversation of my parents knowing him, because if they misgender him or call him by his name. How they going to misgender me with all this facial hair, dog? She, her mom did misgender me before. She called me a dyke. She, she said the word dyke. It wasn't even like dyke. It was like Haitian, which is more, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. more like faggot. You don't have to translate so. that one for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like yeah. one of the few words I know. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we could do it now. It's just that haven't happened yet. That's all. So, have they seen each other? They saw him in passing because I was leaving the house and they were coming back to the house oh, okay. and he was in the car. But he was, you know, pass not passing. He was not passing. Okay. No, he was passing. I don't no, even it know. Wasn't. This is when we first started. Okay, well, talking. he was not passing, so they called him Mama Cece. And okay. I was like, <laughs> don't say them. Your mom did. Your dad is cool. Your dad seems cool. Your My dad's passive scary. aggressive. He said that shit in his head. Okay. <laughs> At least he ain't saying it out loud. He shit in his head. But yeah, so, you know, they said it, and I was just like, I had to keep it together. But at the same time, like, I was boiling hot. So, I don't know how they it would happen. I like I can assume now, because he's more passing, like, you can't tell. Mm. 
Like, you can't tell him that this is the... You can't tell him that he's not a full-ass, grown-ass man. So, I don't think it'll be a problem now. But I think they'll try to pull some, like, fuck shit. And be like, I thought you was a dyke! So, oh, my gosh. They will remember all of a sudden. No, all of a sudden they remember. <laughs> shit, couldn't get it right. But, yeah. See, yet. is that a fear for you? Like, are you afraid of that experience, like, introducing your parents to him? Not really. Um, I've introduced a partner to them before, and they talked complete shit, like, on some colorism shit. Oh. Like, this black motherfucker from this section of Haiti, why would you date him, oh. and blah, 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 blah. Don't you so, love, you know, prejudice within well, your own culture? So great. Call him a piece of shit, dirty, everything. But so, oh, so not, y'all the bougie Haitians. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm not bougie. You not. I'm not bougie. I love all my skin tones. <laughs> but um, but that, that's what happens when you're Caribbean. Yeah. And you don't educate yourself past being Caribbean mm-hmm. in church. So, you know, they had that experience. So at that point, after that happened, I'm not scared to introduce him. It just hasn't happened yet. You just so. don't want to do with the bullshit. No, not really. Okay. Do either of you practice any kind of religion? Not really. Spiritual, but not like I'm going to church. and Because I've already, I feel like, I, I know I sound like, you know, it's a game or something. But I feel like i already done that. Like, I gotta, if I'm gonna shake it up, I'm gonna shake it up <laughs> with something else. I've been the youth leader. <laughs> I've been the youth leader. I've been the Sunday school teacher. Right. He's not gonna well, strike me. He's no, not gonna strike me. Right. Coming right <laughs> Jay just moved the whole. <laughs> I've been in youth group. I've been a Sunday school teacher. I've been in the praise dance group. I've done all of that, especially with my dad being pastor. So now I'm just like, fuck that shit. It's always the preacher's kid. What you mean? <laughs> Young and wholesome. Amen. Amen. But yeah, like, <laughs> I feel like I'm, if I'm going to shake it up, I'm going to shake it up something else. I'm okay. not doing that. So, a spiritual, yes. Religious, no, nah, not really. Do you pray? But that's a, that's a good when question. When I piss her off. That's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. Because because of that's what I was taught and raised into, I do have a habit of praying when shit get rough. Yeah. Only when shit gets rough. Only when shit gets rough. Okay. You know? Do you think it works? I think it's just a coincidence that my stuff get answered. Okay. So you feel like you just put it into the universe and the universe just brings it back I think that's what it you. is. I think I just be manifesting it through my words and then they take it and they give it to him by accident, you know, because oh. delivery of the mail, you know. So the carrier takes the next carrier and they happen to be God and he'd be like, oh, okay, I don't know who, you know, sent this request, but I'm going to answer it and then boom, boom, pow, it comes to me. You know, something like that. It got to be... The universe. Like the Harry Potter owls. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. Hedwig. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Absolutely correct. But no, like, if you had to ask me, the universe answers my prayers. Okay. Not necessarily God. Okay. Chase? I would say I identify most with a Christian. I'm not like this heathen here. I do go to church. Who's a heathen? You, sis. Um, I go I'm to triggered. church. Um, I've been looking for maybe like a home church here. Okay. Um, I, I've experimented with some churches. They're kind of cool, but um, I don't know. I have this like love hate relationship with the black church. Mm-hmm. Speak um, on it. I would say it feels like home, but like an abusive home. Oh. So. It's kind of like weird how, like now I find myself looking for like a black church. I want the big choir. I want the organ player. You want the loud, high, clapping. Yeah, like I want the pastor sweating and he got a towel. (laughs) And then it's food afterwards. But then in the same same token, it's like, can you go in there and not feel judged? Can anyone? In one breath, I feel comfortable, but then in the next breath, I'm on edge. Like, if this motherfucker say something transphobic or homophobic, I'm walking out. That's why I'm, you know, I don't really, like, want to go to church. Because that specific reason, like, one, one second you for me, next minute you not. Like, I don't want to deal with that. I understand that. You said here. Are you from somewhere else? Yeah, I'm from uh, Delaware. I moved to Florida two years ago. Whole family or just you? No, just me. Oh, man. Yeah. By myself. On the block. Hold it down. <laughs> you didn't write me. 
Okay. Yeah. So, I completely understand that though. Like That's... I've I've gone to Church by the Glades, they're really cool. They're Heard really really welcoming, but it's still not home. Like I don't I feel like comfortable. <laughs> he hasn't like the past hasn't preached anything like that I'm against or homophobic or transphobic or anything, but it still doesn't have that that home feeling of a black church is just a very weird relationship. And I think most people in our community have that same sort of relationship. Yeah. But um, like church makes me feel comfortable and it gives me a sort of peace that I don't get from other places. It feeds me spiritually. Um, I do pray. Um, not when only things are bad, but I thank God for all the things because he's delivered me from a lot. I mean, I don't think if it wasn't for God, I, we would be sitting here right now. I wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> Pastor oh. collection, please. <laughs> for real, I'm like, we got offering coming. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, I'm actually, okay. Did you ever question God as far yes. as gender? Yes. Was yeah. that hard for you? Like, Very. were you angry about that? Very. Very angry. Like, up until recently, I always thought like cursed. I felt cursed by God. Was it kind of like a why did you do this type right. of thing? Like of all the people in the world, why me? Like why did you pick this hard road for me? Like why did this have to be my experience? And then, you know, coming to find myself, I was very depressed. And so I'm like, yo, save me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm drowning. I need you to save me because nobody else saw me drowning. And it was just like, yo, I need help, motherfucker. Where are you? <laughs> and this was my... I have a relationship with God. I don't really believe in religion mm -hmm. in a sense, but like, I have my own relationship. And I'm like, yo, nigga, help me. <laughs> like, I like that because I know some people who say that they talk to God like I'm talking to the homie. Like, listen... Right. This is what I need. What's up? Like, right. you know, instead of, you know, get down on your knees and hold your hands in front right. of you and you pray and dear God and all yeah. of that. And I always like find it fascinating when people tell me that they talk to God like they're talking to, you know, someone they know, someone they're right. familiar with. And I feel like not to downplay on anyone else's, you know, practices, but I feel like I value that more because you're more authentic within yourself with your relationship requests and even just regular talking like, hey, my day was great today, like type of thing. If if we read the Bible, we believe that God is omnipresent. He knows my thoughts anyway. So if I say it like that in my head and I just speak it, it's mm -hmm. fake. Yeah. Because if, if I believe God to be who we say he is, then... He knows what I'm thinking anyway, so I might as well say it. So what's the difference? Yeah. In my opinion. But like you said, everybody has their own practices. But yeah, I've always felt like, and that was me breaking down like around February last year. That's when I just couldn't take it anymore. And I called my mom. I was like, yo, I can't take this shit. And I was like, God is cursing me. And she was like, oh, it must be terrible to feel that way, blah, 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 blah. And then... Yeah, I got some testosterone, and but I think I was. <laughs> oh, and you. Never mind. I that's fine. I didn't meet you then. I met you later. You didn't want to that's meet fine. me then. No, I'll go through your timeline. Go ahead. <laughs> I met you in May. Oh, no, that's why I said go through your timeline. Yeah, Sweet Heat. Oh, Wasn't yeah. it raw Sweet Heat time? I remember yeah, when she was out thought and bopping. I didn't even do half my thought and bopping. Because I was just like, oh, I feel bad. I can't go suck this dick and then go suck his dick. That's not going to work. Like, I'm like oh a hoe. So I'm going to go suck this dick and then I'll probably catch up with that one in like 15 years or something. So uh, I made the decision. You are so embarrassing. Look at honesty. Not embarrassing at Gotta all. Gotta love it. Not embarrassing at all. <laughs> but yeah, I just feel... But to go back to what he was saying like, and what you were saying... um. The times when I'm like, you know, frustrated while I'm mad and that's the only time I pray, that's literally how I pray. And he kind of low key judged me for that. But like, I don't sit there and be like, the way the Christians do it, like, God, I need you in this hour. Like, come through. No, I'm like, you bitch ass motherfucker. Like, give me a job. <laughs> <laughs> but meanwhile, are you applying for jobs? Yes. Oh, okay. Just yes. making sure. I'm going to help him out. Faith without works is dead. 
I don't that. know what that means. Um, Read the Bible, use pastor. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, I'm, obviously I'm going to help him do the work, but at the end of the day, I feel like Mr. Universe, Mr. God, whoever you are, like, damn, nigga, what the fuck? I'm out here struggling and shit. Like, I ain't had a permit like three weeks and you, I ain't got no job. So, you know, I do talk to him like that. Just to go back on what y'all was talking about. <laughs> Perm My head important. all peeking your knee. Peeky, peeky. Oh, <laughs> okay. I hate that term. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, that Jason was... looks looking like he's so over you right now. That's how he always looks. Okay. Well, I mean. Because this is not an act. This is her 24-7. I kind of figured as oh much. Oh my god! I kind of figured as much. I am not embarrassing. Everybody. But I Keep mean, real, you see this on Twitter though, like the same antics she keeps up with on Twitter, the same slickness, the same goofiness, all of that. They start with me. She got me trapped by the angles, oh, the pics, the thirst traps. Yeah, them them thirst traps real. Cause yeah. in all in real life, like I was, you was a thirst follow. Like for real, for real. She reeled me in. She reeled me in with the yeah, thirst she track. she denied me too. It's okay. I wasn't I, I wasn't masculine even, enough for her. I don't even have photos on Twitter. Anyway, do, listen. Do I need to put your IG header too. as my um, no, banner no, 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 for this question. episode? No, 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 next question. Yes. Y'all can go follow. Let me stop. No, 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 <laughs> I thought she was a catfish until I seen her on the Metro Mover downtown. Oh yeah, oh, yeah with the iguana. Yeah, <laughs> the iguana. Please stop. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, Kool Aid Dadrit. Oh. Shut up, please stop. Okay. Anyway. My bad. Yeah. So I read it to her in the Metro Mover. And I was like, oh, she's not a catfish, but I think she was high or something. I thought she was slow for real. I was like, oh, this bitch is yeah, dumb. I was oh, on wow. the phone with my and was, I was high as shit. I thought she was dumb. I was oh, like, so y'all oh. were both with you were on the phone with someone phone, yeah. and you were physically with someone and y'all was just yeah. making eyes at each other? No, what happened was is that I was on the mover and I missed my. I was that high, like I missed my stop. <laughs> she was just sitting but on the bench like, for like five movers. I'm like, oh, she's dumb as hell. Like she is dumb. Because when I smoke weed, like I just move so slow and retarded. So like Don't I miss the R word. That's ableist. Mm. You're gonna have the LGBT sip my thing. um disability. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, if they come for you, I'm going to help you. I shouldn't them. be laughing at that. That's not funny. <laughs> oh, I am so sorry. But, um, You're not sorry. Yeah, I missed the move. I missed my stop, and I ended up at the next stop. And then <laughs> I was sitting there. When I got off the train, I saw him, and I saw him with his girl. And you should, his face was like, ah, and I was like, no. Nah. Don't gas it. No, you you really, I'm not lying to you. you he you looked really, excited. You really look like, there go bro. And I was like, anyway, motherfucker. So um, were y'all following each other at this time, like on social media or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. she kept, she gave me her number on social media, right? She was like, "Oh, you just got here, hit me up, we could chill, blah 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 blah." But she's like one of those fake ass people, like, "Oh, hit me up, yeah, we gonna kick it." Because every time he hit me up, I was broke. Where I was going? I feel you. The beach is free, sis. But what if she get hungry? Ooh. If I'm asking you out, I'm not expecting you to pay. Yeah, but see, in this society. Mm. Women, we, we kind of have stop to have with, our own... Stop messing with them fuck niggas. We kind of have to have our own just in case life happens. Exactly. You might piss us off. We might have to catch a exactly. foot walk, you exactly. know, six miles down the road. Catch that you ain't got no Uber, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You just got to yeah. make sure we got a little $20. Get Bex money, as we call it in Jamaica. Thank Things you. happen. You got to, exactly. you know? Yeah. She feels my pain. I'm just saying. So, but, yeah. But I be flaking on people too. So, um, you know... It's just like, like he said, like I gave him my number and I was like, yeah, we should hang out sometime. But every time we hang out, it was like, mm -mm, okay, whatever, you know, kind of broke, kind of busy. So then, um, when I saw him on the mover, like I saw his face, he was just kind of like, oh shit, they a roll, like low key in the face. But I didn't process it. I was just saw this, I just saw him and I was just like, okay, whatever. Kept moving, getting cussed out, getting cussed out on the phone, blah, blah, blah. And the next thing you know, he walks up to me. So, like, with me, I'm low-key, honest to God, I'm very shy. Mm -hmm. So it's either I'm acting a fool because I'm too shy or I'm just acting a fool. You can never tell the difference. Like, mm -hmm. I'll tell him, like, after our first date, like, I was nervous as fuck, but I was cracking jokes that whole time. That's my, my defense mm -hmm. mechanism. So, um, but that time when he approached me, 
that the old way that I used to deal with it is I'll just shut down and get like real laid back for no reason. So I was high, I was getting yelled at, and he, you know, caught me off guard. So I was just kind of like, yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh-huh. they're going another train. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, um, are you going to catch one? And she was like, oh, just waiting for the next one. I was like, oh, but, she's slow. <laughs> no, but I was low-key giving, because I felt like, yeah, I was like, you know, not giving him any play. But for some reason, I wanted to stay there a little bit longer. And like try to see if he could redeem himself. So I was just like, I wait for the honest to God. I was just like, redeem myself from what? Because you wasn't doing so well. You didn't even let me shoot. What are you talking I about? I let you shoot by walking up to me. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah. So you know, I was like, oh, there go another train. But after a while, I was just like, let me take my dumb ass home because I hung up the phone with my boot thing, whatever. And I felt heat on my back. I felt the feds, the apps. On my neck. So. I was like, let me go home. <laughs> and that was it. So how did you end up redeeming yourself for us to be here Crown a year oil. later? <laughs> Crown, Crown Apple. Oil and ice? They should sponsor me. for real. <laughs> So I was like. Me and the girl. That wasn't like. We weren't like serious. Like okay. it was like a little fling or whatever. Okay. So, Y'all was talking, quote unquote. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was something. Smash like and that. pass. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was from she's from Maryland or whatever. So like okay. I moved down here, so it was like she would oh, she would come you, through and then go back home and then you know. Okay. So then like we stopped talking and then I was like dating someone else and then it was just like that didn't work out. So I was chilling and then I got drunk and I just texted her. I'm like, When are you gonna stop playing with me? Hey, I was drunk and high already too. <laughs> so I was like, ah. <laughs> trying to play beer pong with no aim. I was like, hey, hey. So. so then I told her we were going out. No, that's not. Let's let's put in my little fact there. Because he was just like, when are you gonna stop playing and let me take you out? And I was just like, you don't say all this shit when you sober. And I said, a drunk man tells no lies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then that's when that happened. So um, I was at work. And, you know, I didn't want to give him too much play, so I went to the Rainbows <laughs> and got a clearance dress yes. or whatever. So we went to Cushion and all that. <laughs> Had my little burgers and fries. <laughs> Don't cover your face. You're crazy, <laughs> You know, my little $10 dress that rips when you breathe. You stretch. <laughs> yeah. That thing is bullshit. So, yeah. Um, and that's just how it happened. Yeah. So a little alcohol, some drunk texting, and here we are. Yes. Almost here. And Winwood. Shout out to Winwood. And then he jumped my bones. That is a lie. She yes. tried to take me to the Chobe on the first night. Oh. No, no, no. That's after you jumped my bones. And I was like, we could fuck on the sidewalk. Or <laughs> we could go to the Chobe. Now y'all know I'm not lying because I'm not from here. I don't know shit about the Chobe. <laughs> she tried to take me there. But I said, let's go to the Chobe. <laughs> And you thought I was joking. I was dead serious for them $35. <laughs> <laughs> I was dead serious. For those who don't know, explain what the Chobie is. The Chobie is a luxury. <laughs> <laughs> she trying to get sponsored by the Chobie. <laughs> luxury suites. Chobie and Crown Royal, great, we coming for you. With amenities such as jacuzzis, strip, pole, strip poles, um, housekeeping, you know. Herpes. On the roaches. <laughs> <laughs> Murder of prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice though, you know, they knock on your door and be like, time! <laughs> you know? Because they want you to get out their little suite for the next bitches. <laughs> so, you know, it's real nice. You know, it's cheap. It's like $35 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all got me dying right now. Okay, you know, I think we talked to, no, we talked about this on a previous episode, but we didn't refer to it as Chovy because I've never been to one and the person I was discussing it with isn't from here, but mm. they know of it from other places. Cause, it's you know. a great place. <laughs> so I've heard. Mm-hmm. So I've heard. Mm-hmm. I'll keep that in mind. Great 35 place. for the hour. I'm too busy Anybody? for the Chobie. I'm sorry. Listen, sis. You I, get a jacuzzi. I you get a stripper pole. You get themes. You get jungle themes. <laughs> all that. You get all that for $35. That sounds Why like not? You when get I think hepatitis of that, too. Huh? Oh, shit. When I think <laughs> of that, I, I literally think of the Bride of Chucky. And yeah, that's me scene with the mirror on the roof. I yeah, that movie ruined it for me. I, you gotta flip it to some section. 
getting stabbed with glass. Yeah, doing the like the little knife, knife play. play. No knife play is lit. I don't want too much blood. Not too much blood. Not too much blood. <laughs> Not too much blood. So you know the whole. You know you can get the regular one. You know it's a room with a window. <laughs> The room with a window. The How many of these rooms have you experienced? She's literally. <laughs> you said sp- you had a list of questions. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you yeah. sound like you know a couple of these rooms. I'm, you know. She tried to get sponsored. Notes. Like Tiffany Haddish got the group on from talking about group on. She trying to get the Chilby sponsorship. Executive Palace is a nice place to go. <laughs> I am not knocking. Oh, <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the I'm just the only prude in this room then. I'm just, you know, <laughs> sip my little red nephew and mind my business. Ooh. Mm. <clears throat> Looks like everyone here has had their time at uh the executive palace. I'm sorry, is, is I that... didn't go there. Oh, you didn't I, go. I, I, I took her to the hill. The sidewalk? On the oh. second date. Um, I'm too boozy for When's the When's your birthday? I need to give you a high five. There yeah, we I'm go. A Capricorn. Boring. I, oh, I don't like y'all. Um <laughs> <laughs> take it back. <laughs> Sometimes I like y'all from a distance. Y'all cool. Y'all cool. Y'all cool. Y'all cool. At but, work. They cool at work. Really? They're boring people. This dick not boring though. Oh, you're right. <laughs> where it counts, where it counts. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool though, you know. Hilton. It's a nice place. You should try it. Not the Hilton. Chobi. <laughs> I've tried the Hilton. Uh, See, the Chobi. Yeah, the yeah Chobi. that's what I'm saying. I can high five you because, you know. The Chobi is a nice place. I'm kind of scared. I heard no, herpes and hepatitis. It no, sounds like cause anything you know that's what? 35 you know what? sheets. It's always, <laughs> right. no, because that's what she knocks on the door and says time for. So she changed her sheets and stuff like that. But it's always the people who ain't never been to the Chobi who got something to say about the Chobi. You told me somebody was murdered there. Oh, shit. In one of the rooms. And okay. I'm going to give you that room. How do you know? Is it blocked off? Yes. You don't know that. It's not, but, um, <laughs> you know. I heard there's roaches there. Ain't no roaches. <laughs> roach. There was one roach? Yes. Did you see the roach? Once. <laughs> see? No. <laughs> that's, that's out of pocket. Go honesty. Go honesty. You know? Just So just bring some raid and your, your $35 exactly. right. to go. No. All right, come on. Condom is raid. <laughs> All right. Disgusting. <laughs> well, we done spent $100 and some change on... Rooms before, and I just think we should save a little money with thirty five dollars. You know, talking to me. I have a clean bill of health as well. <laughs> Thank you. Peace of mind. He's paying right. for the peace of mind. You okay. know, hepatitis ain't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> she for thirty five dollars on a contract. Hepatitis. <laughs> then I gotta pay my twenty dollar copay. copay. You get a copay. I got twenty dollar copay, and then I gotta pay for the shot. No, it's too much. And I go to the doctor like every fucking two weeks now. No, I don't need no other copays. I will no. pay your copay. Because you don't go to the doctor. That's why. I do go to the doctor. Are you one of those? It's been a minute. What, what are your home remedies? What you right. Just... The Haitian home remedies. <laughs> Sweat. That's what I'm thinking. Sweat. Dad, tea. Her dad almost cut his finger off and he wrapped that shit up. <laughs> oh, yeah. And drank some tea? No, he wrapped it in like toilet tissue, but it was the, like the Caribbean Haitian roll of toilet tissue. That like one ply thing. <laughs> oh, my. And then he just took some duct tape and wrapped it. <laughs> It Home finally made, stopped bleeding the next day. Homemade band aid. Yeah, it stopped bleeding the next day. Yeah. The next day. <laughs> no, I'm so serious. The next day, stop bleeding. That's okay. But stuff like that doesn't happen to me. I just get like a really bad cold, and then I go by my business. You just sweat it out, mm-hmm. and you sound like me. I don't like mm-hmm. medicine. I mean, Ray and nephew. Listen, Ray and nephew need to sponsor me. But <laughs> <laughs> literally every show I'm drinking. I think it's only one show I've done that I haven't, you know, me and my bottle just being here chilling. Yeah, I'm Jamaican. Everything. <laughs> you sick? Drink some rum. Drink some tea. Exactly. Just sweat it out. Exactly. Okay. I, it's, partially, it's partially that. And it's because I'm kind of like, you know, your body heals itself mm-hmm. over time. So I kind of don't want to put any extra. Rum is okay. Sweat it out. But, well, <laughs> you know, thing. all the other stuff I'm just, eh. Well, that's the thing. That's actually, like, the reason why I try not to take anything is because when it's the time of the month, you know, I have to take medications because that shit's unbearable. I don't know how people do that shit. Like, just free bleeding and all that stuff. I don't know how they do that shit. But, like, I have to take, like, eight, nine ibuprofen just to feel okay. So, if I get, like, a cold or something, I'm not taking anything extra because I already almost killed myself. 
from a damn hmm. enough? No. Once a month is enough. <laughs> no, no. So I try not to take none of that stuff. I just sweat it out. Okay. So yeah, there's no reason to go to a hospital. Well, I have to go to the doctor to make sure my hormones are regulated properly. Not because I'm not healthy, you know. And other things can affect that, like hepatitis. Right. I'll be fucked up out here. <laughs> I already got to give myself a shot. I don't want to do no, f- no more shots. Okay. No more tests. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. You I have a question. I just up? thought about something. Mm-hmm. Are you you taking shots, right? Mm-hmm. How often are you? Once a week. Once a week. So, I'm asking ignorant questions. Did this... The frequency of it, did that reduce mm-hmm. as time progresses? Or? No, it's the same. It's the same. It's just they up the dosage, lower the dosage. Or... I started out as a 0. 0.5 mm-hmm. mil. Um, she lowered it a little bit because like my horm- my testosterone rate like skyrocketed. Okay. So she lowered it a little bit to like 0. 0.45 mm-hmm. um, because testosterone would clot your blood, and then I would have had a heart attack at the Chobi with the hepatitis. Oh. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So she lowered it a little bit. Um, so. Now, they ran some tests the last time I went to the doctor. They just, like, your first year, they they check you a lot to make mm-hmm. sure everything's good. Um, so, I wait for my test results now to make sure it's, like, back. Because it was, like, almost, like, double what a cisgender male was. Like, the shit oh, went wow. crazy. It was a hybrolic. <laughs> yeah. Like, within three months, it was, like, really crazy. Oh, wow. I mean, it doesn't happen for everyone like that. I was just... Yeah, it's really, based on chemistry. Right. I was really lucky. Like, my estrogen levels went... Usually, they both raise mm-hmm. if you don't have, like, an estrogen blocker or some type of blocker. But my estrogen went down, like, significantly, and my testosterone went up. Go you. I know, right? <laughs> That's it's awesome. crazy. Do you, I follow a lot of um, trans men, and mm-hmm. I have, you know seen documentaries and stories mm-hmm. and people who document do you document your transition oh uh, i did at first okay. like because my friends back home was like oh my god i want to see like mm-hmm. i think i took a video of my first shot and i think maybe the first month i did like voice recording mm-hmm. and then i did one in seven months okay so like but you're I not like avidly updating no or anything like because that. i forget like i'm lazy about a lot of stuff like if it's not something that keeps me alive, mm-hmm. like, I really don't do it. Like, okay. I just, it slips my mind. And then I hate giving myself a shot anyway. So it's just like, I just want to get this shit over with. I don't want to document it. I don't want to set up the camera to make sure it's right. I just want to do this shit and get it over with. Okay. So you just live in it instead of just, you know. Right. Okay. Right. Do you have, like, a set body goal? Like, do you have, like, an image of yourself that you want to see eventually, like? Yes. Do you know Lathe Ashley? That name sounds familiar. Yo, he is a god. He is a god. I met him in person. I was, like, girl crushing over him. <laughs> but, like, if I could be, like, really cut up, like, that's just... Because I'm... Right now, I'm in the making of launching, like, a swim trunk line for okay. trans men. Mm. And so, obviously, I want to be the face. So, um, I want to be in, like, really good shape. Okay. Yeah. What's up? I've been on my fitness shit. That's what's up. You, you want you like a see? full beard and all that stuff? Oh, yeah. Too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want like, well, in Philly, we call them Sunnis. Okay. Like the real thick mm-hmm. beard. So I want a thick ass Sunni. <laughs> yeah. My whole level's going to go up. You're lucky you got me down. <laughs> Price about to go up. Right. Talking about. My dress about to get longer. <laughs> the facial hair coming in. While you got sweet heat, I don't know. It's <laughs> not going to go that fast. <laughs> Not this week. <laughs> Next okay. week. Okay. I'm gonna give you one of them lace fronts beards. <clears throat> I'm gonna expose I'm, you. I'm gonna take your concealer and just paint it in. I'm gonna expose you. We almost the same complexion. I'm gonna expose you. <laughs> Do you guys? I know a lot of couples, you know, in the LGBT have like a YouTube channel. Have you guys ever thought about doing one of those? Um, he wanted to. Don't lie, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie. He wanted to. Um, I don't know. I thought about it, but for me, I'm not that kind of person. Like, hi guys, welcome to our channel. (laughs) Let's play pranks on each other. (laughs) No, 
I might just put up a video like, fuck that nigga. <laughs> that's it. People will watch it, though. <laughs> like, that's it. That's that's our post for today. <laughs> fuck that nigga. Moving like, on. Catch us next week. <laughs> exactly. So, I don't know. And then on top of that, you got to think about, like, content and stuff like that. Like, I know I'm a character, but there's yes. times where I'm just, like, chilling. Like, what if that's our Never day? Never chilling. What if like what if it's a what if it's a Tuesday and it's upload day and I'm just bleh? I'm gonna say like fuck y'all and that's what I'm gonna upload. Like that's it. I don't know what you <laughs> So you're me. just worried about being consistent with yeah. uploading and things like yeah, that. Yeah, and then it, a lot of times it comes off like cornball shit and you know, like be what's my favorite color? Blue. No, it's not. I don't I'm not doing all you, that. You watch a bunch of these videos? <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> I hate them so much. <laughs> so I'm not doing all that. So I mean, if we could figure out a way to do it, I don't mm-hmm. mind doing it. But then, you know, you have people in your business and oh yeah, I broke up and they broke up because of this and broke up for that. I break up with it. We break up like every three weeks. Poblecito. So yeah. Do we? You just don't just tell about, me? Just about. Just about. In her head. Every yeah, three months. Clearly. Every three months, I would say that. You look so okay. confused. <laughs> okay, well, She's we... a Pisces. She has arguments in her head. So she's, this is right shit she has come up with. We broke up one time for 24 hours. And no. that was like a, a huh. month ago. Uh, when else did we break up? There was one know. more time before that. No, was it? Oh, I was done with you in my head. Oh, then. see? I told you. <laughs> it's our imaginary friend she be arguing with. I was done with you in my head. Okay. But yeah, like, I don't know. You, you just got to figure out like the dynamics of it and stuff like that. But I don't know. If it happens, it happens. I get. I had to get my key back. <clears throat> anyway, I've thought about it just because like... I've been on the other side of, like, what it means to be trans and, like, mm-hmm. wanting to date and, like, holy shit. That's why I asked. I'm never going to, like, find anybody. No one's going to accept me. No one's going to love me. Because that's very valid. And it's hard, like, because some people, if you want to live stealth and then after you disclose, people are like, I don't want to date someone that's mm-hmm. trans. Whatever the fuck that means. Um, like, so part of me wants to do that for the community to show you, like, yeah, you can find love and yeah, you can find someone who will accept you. No, you don't have to settle for being with someone just because you're trans. You can mm-hmm. be with someone that fulfills you in multiple ways besides your gender identity, mm-hmm. you know? And I don't think it's a lot of black cis trans couples out there for people to maybe look up to, aspire to be, Child. ask questions. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was part of the reason why I've thought about it um, because Black trans men really don't exist anyway, mm-hmm. especially for younger people growing up and you want to see someone like, yeah, the shit is hard. But once you get through that, it'll be OK. Like the suicide rate is so high for like Ooh. trans youth. And it's like, that's one thing I really want to touch. Like it's it'll be all right. Like you'll figure shit out. Eventually you'll you'll find love. You'll find someone who cares about you genuinely and you don't. You don't have to think you experience life alone. And I think that's the biggest thing that most of us go through. They think you're alone. And so that's why I thought about it. We live kind of far. So like she said, the consistency Mm -hmm. would be like rough. But I think it'd be kind of dope. I think we're real. And I think instead of that like fabricated bullshit that she's talking about that people do. I think that would be our biggest like asset because like this is how we act all the time it's just being recorded (laughs) right now and the youtube would just kind of just record that so i think the realness of it would be something people would care about i understand that that's basically the whole point of me actually doing this podcast also because from a caribbean standpoint being because i'm bisexual hate the title but whatever it's easier to explain but um i'm jamaican as fuck like (laughs) like Mm -hmm. i'm jamaican and I know other Jamaicans, like I've said before, who are lesbian, gay, whatever. And outside of that community, it's like, where are the rest of us? What are the rest of us going through? Like, And I know other people who have had the same questions that I've had. Like, I talked about going to um, Chutney Pride in New York, which is basically gay Caribbean pride. And 
hearing them say on the mic, oh, yeah, I see a lot of Jamaican flags here. I know Jamaicans were gay. And it's a it's a joke, but it's still a very ignorant thought that a lot of people have because, you know, we have artists who sing songs about gay people and all this other mm-hmm. foolishness. So and a lot of Jamaicans will be quick to say, ain't nobody from Jamaica gay. There's no gay Jamaicans and a lot of other Caribbean islands that would say that also because they're so proud within their culture and their ignorance of, you know, heterosexual norms that being gay or anything other than heterosexual is just completely looked at like that's not happening. And then the average child or the average adolescent, whoever that feels like I'm attracted to the same gender or I'm born in the wrong body or anything like that is like, is something wrong with me? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, no, bro, you good. (laughs) Like go fed, go, you know what I'm saying? Live your life. But that's really, that's really why I asked you that question because Mm -hmm. from a standpoint of dating and, you know, living your life as a man, like, people need to know that that shit is okay like like i said like i follow a few accounts and i see a few people who are and actually um follow someone who's in dc who's a trans man also he's actually a police officer i'm like mm. look you have a crush on him but um he Who's um this? <laughs> his name is malcolm <laughs> Shoot shots in 2018. i'm not shooting no shots he has a girlfriend <laughs> but you what's know. the problem <laughs> Don't let his girlfriend stop you, girl. <laughs> but you Steph know what I'm saying. Curry with the boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So it's like there are few and far between. But unless you really care to look for it, it's not going to be something that's visibly present. So that's what I'm asking about. Like mm-hmm. you know, making it visible. And me personally, I'm really big on like mental health and just living your happiest life. Because at the end of the day, like you get one. So you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying. It's like. What use is it to go around like, oh, my God, something's wrong with me. I can't, you know. And then the thing that I asked you guys about religion also is like the conflict of religion and being yourself, like identifying. It's like, well, God doesn't make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that whole idea of, you know, God didn't make me this way. I'm sinning. I I like the same sex. This is wrong. And like I said, I know so many people who have gone through this. Like I know people who have been suicidal and then they're like, I can't kill myself. That's a sin. So it's like all around conflict and it's just one thing it's like yo just live your life like that's the whole point of this like podcast it's just mm-hmm. like dog live your life love yourself like just be free like go wave your flag and wave the other flag too you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying so that's just you know that's really the whole point of it um thank you guys for coming in you know Thanks. let me pry in y'all lives <laughs> for a little bit ask some you know inane questions mm-hmm. and all that fun stuff I hope you know some people got some kind of interesting insight in this hope somebody learned something from this hope people don't ask those ignorant questions and you know things like that because i find it (sighs) cisgender people are always considered like so curious about transgenitalia and i always find that so fascinating (laughs) because uh, that's why i asked the question because i personally don't care that's your body if you want to get surgery that's you whatever like you know saying but i feel like a lot of cisgendered people feel like if you don't get the surgery, then you're less of the gender that right. you identify as. But I feel like you got something to say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I just think like cisgender people, like we live in 2018. You want to know something without offending somebody? Google it, research it, find out about it. Like it's so simple. Instead, you'd rather sit there and make people uncomfortable. Well, what your dick look like? That's not your damn mm-hmm. business. Like, mind your business. On top of that, it's just, I find it so crazy because if, I know it's not equivalent, but if I walked up to you and you told me your name was Pooh, mm-hmm. and you don't like your government name, I gotta call you Pooh, it's okay. Mm-hmm. But if Jace walks up to you and be like, I'm a man, all of a sudden you can't compute that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, that makes no sense to me. If we could call a grown-ass man Diddy, you could call me whatever the <laughs> like, fuck I tell you to call me. It makes no sense. Brother love. Brother love. <laughs> yeah. It makes no sense at all. Like, oh, yeah, my name is Brittany, but call me Sasha because I like that name better. Okay, cool. Nah, that's Sasha over there. But if Jace, you know, tells you this is what it is, all of a sudden, well, nah, I ain't doing that because you, you're fucking dumb. Yeah, okay. and that shit gets on my nerves. That's all. That's what that <laughs> face was. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, people it's, are it's it's true though because I see a lot of interviews like even with um oh my gosh why is her name slipping me right now oh, what's her name Laverne Cox mm-hmm. I forgot which interview she was doing someone asked her about her gender it's like don't worry about what's in my panties like yeah point blank period and I feel like that level of respect is very important because if I'm not fucking you, you don't need to know what's going on down there. Mm-hmm. Like, that's me personally because I have that level of respect for people, but 
not everyone has that same respect. So, I mean, all day long, I don't care if you tell me, hey, you want to be called um, alien? Hey, alien, how you doing today? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I don't, and I, I, I hope for one day that, you know, people get to the point where they can respect people for who they are as opposed to who they think they should be. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's one of those things. It's like, you know, just whatever. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... Well, I guess people are gross. My <laughs> opinion may be different than most trans people. Like, I don't mind the questions because I know t- people typically have a curiosity, mm-hmm. especially something that's not normal to them. I put mm-hmm. normal in quotes. Don't come for me. <laughs> um, but it's just the way you approach me. Mm-hmm. Now, if I feel like you're trying to be on some funny shit and mm-hmm. you're being disrespectful then I don't let anyone disrespect me. I don't care on what level it's on. You're not going to disrespect me. Um, but if you're just like, hey, you know, like even like trans guys that or or people who are thinking about maybe if they're trans or non-binary hit me up on Twitter and ask me certain questions that most people would think might be like disrespectful or violating or whatever. But I think sometimes... It's helpful for people who might be trying to figure out themselves or whatever. It's just really, to me, about their approach. And if it's coming from a respectful place. Yeah, like someone that's genuinely trying to learn and not just be a trigger. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I, I understand that. But like Rose said, there's Google. Mm-hmm. And I said this on a previous episode also. I feel like certain people, it's kind of like white mm-hmm. people and racism. They want to ask you, oh... What is it like to be black? Like, what is it like? They want <laughs> black people to teach them how to be an ally. And it's like, mm-hmm. there's so many ways you can look online to figure out how not to be problematic as opposed to coming to someone and saying, hey, we're your, we're your ancestors slaves. Like, you know, and asking all these ignorant mm-hmm. questions. Whereas, like, I feel like if people genuinely want to learn, they're so like, if you actually go look, there are people who document their journey transitioning. There are people I've seen an enlarged clitoris from someone who has taken tea and, you know, like I'm saying, like people document these things. So like you said, it is approach also. There's some people who they don't know that it's out there. 2018, okay. But, you know what I'm saying? Like everything is on the internet. (laughs) It's crazy because that's how I found out about, you know, people who transitioning because I was just on YouTube just looking at, I forgot what I was looking at, but I ended up on a video where somebody was transitioning from male to female and they show you the whole surgery of how that happened. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that you could do that. That's cool. I mean, it looked like it hurt, but (laughs) that's kind of cool. Like, it's so simple. Like, so simple. And I honestly will answer a question for, like, close families and friends that genuinely approach me and, like, they have questions. I'll just tell them what I can um, with respect to him. And other than that, I'd be like, no, you got to look that up yourself. Yeah. But other than that, like, I feel like you being funny, like he said, or I know for a fact that you could look that up. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm like, not. Your phone you. is in your hand while you're asking me this question. What's yeah. up? <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. But, yeah, I'm hopefully, you know, reading is fundamental. Right. <laughs> and, and for me, I think it's more like meeting. Like, if I give a fuck about you, it's mm-hmm. more like meeting you halfway. Like, I had a coworker. Um, when I was transitioning, I came out at work. And... Like, my management tried to introduce it to people before I just came out and said my statement. And she was like, oh, what's transgender, right? And so this was two weeks before I made my announcement. What year was this? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then I came out and said, you know, I'm trans or whatever. And then some of my feedback at work was like, oh, some people don't know what that is. And I'm like, if you're talking about this person, they said they didn't know what it was two weeks ago. Now, if they gave a fuck about me, yeah, and if they were up. genuinely concerned, she would have Googled the shit while the manager was talking to her. So now, I don't like the requirement of education. I'm not required mm-hmm. to educate you. I'm not required to do a goddamn thing but live my life. Mm-hmm. My dad says, uh, stay black and pay taxes. So, um, that... That's that's my thing. Like, don't don't think I I have to do anything because mm-hmm. I don't have to educate you. That's what Google being any sort of search engine is for. But if I care about you and I want you to be able to relate, and you're like, oh, I looked this up, but I don't know what that means to you. I think that's a little different. Yeah. Because like I said, black trans men really don't exist 
like a lot of white trans men. Yes. Do. And their experience is still going to be a lot different than yep. mine existing in the world as a white male versus a black male. Mm-hmm. So that that's just the difference for me. Yeah, I completely understand that. Um, as far as coming out at work and things like that, did you do a name change? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you had to tell them, hey, don't call me this anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm Jace now. Mm-hmm. Did they? How long did it take for them to actually get that correct? Well, I used to go by KJ. Okay. So, like, that name never bothered. Like, okay. they would always just call me KJ. So, okay. like, it was whatever. Okay. Um, Like, I didn't mind that. But going from KJ to Jace, like, that... That whole thing didn't matter to me, the name. Okay. It was the pronouns. Oh, yeah. That was so, going to be the next question. <laughs> it was the pronouns. And I think most of them, I mean, they were just like a dope-ass group of people. Okay. So, like, they would correct each other. Hmm. So, it wasn't like something that they'd be like, yeah. Or then <laughs> they would pull each other to the side. like, And then I have a, a friend named Brian. Like, he's not my friend. Like, that's my brother. Like... <laughs> I would give my kidney for him. If he needs anything <laughs> from me, I would I would definitely cuz he's been the dopest ally I could like ever. Like he goes he would go above and beyond for me. Like if we go out to lunch and a waiter misgender me, oh, he man. would go up to the waiter and correct them. Like he's always gone out his way. So like even at work and his people he he'd be like, "Yo, like nah. Don't <laughs> get that together." So I would say probably like 35 people, maybe four or five months. Okay. Like, so, and I met them, you know, with she, her pronouns, uh-huh. and they they were all really accepting and really cool. That's pretty so, awesome. Yeah. You sound like you just had, like, the ideal, like, I know it's not ideal, yeah. but, yeah. like, on the surface, it's, you know, like, it seems like... I would like... say part of me has, like, some sort of, like, survivor's remorse, kind of, <laughs> because, like, I I had insurance... I worked for a great Amen. company that I had insurance. We had a transgender department in the insurance. Oh. Um, everyone at work was accepting. Like, no one ever came out their mouth slick to me. That's never crazy. once. Never, like, even behind my back and it came back to me. Mm-hmm. Never once. So, like, part of me feels almost bad. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, damn, like, I kind of had it easier mm-hmm. than... I know a lot of my other brothers didn't because mm-hmm. you see still people have to start GoFundMe's just so they yes. can get on testosterone because their insurance won't cover it. It, it. Even if you're looking at a cheaper version of it, you're still looking at almost $200 every mm-hmm. three months. That's an expense for for everyone. And so a part of me just feels like kind of bad, like, fuck. Like, I didn't have I've to go through had, that. Right. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have to go through that. And I don't have to go through that because I still have insurance that is covered um, so yeah, I would say it's been pretty ideal. Um, once I finally made up my mind to the transition, but I kind of believe like the universe has to balance itself out because pre I was very depressed and suicidal. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, like outside approach within right. yourself, you went through your own no, struggles. Yeah, I'm saying before my transition. So I'm like, damn, well, finally I got yeah. some good luck. It <laughs> had to balance itself yeah. out because I didn't have that like same sort of supportive family at home yeah. that some people do. Like, yeah. oh yeah, we're here for you. Whatever you decide to do, I didn't have that, and it was very much a battle. So then, at least my medical part, it yeah. went really smooth. But something had to balance out. So then, she's always like, "No, nah, fuck that. You don't have to feel bad. The fuck you feel bad for?" <laughs> but like, that's just our difference in personalities. <laughs> like I said, I'm a rebel. I'm a free floater. So, like, at times when he going through, like, you know, his situation or he's going through, you know, the troubles of, you know, having this whole process, from my perspective and how I was raised, like, I would never understand how he feels because I didn't go through it. So my only reaction is, like, let me be super prepared. No, fuck that bitch. No, no. you go tell her what your name is and what your pronoun. That's where I'm at. (laughs) <laughs> but within himself, I could understand how it's a, like it's trouble. Like he feels like, you know, it's something hard to do because you just can't, you know, be all, no, I'm he, I'm he, I'm he, I'm he, I'm he, I'm he. No. Uh, do you want some waffles? He wants some waffles. <laughs> like, 
I can get it how it's hard for him to do that, but because I've never experienced that, my only reaction is just like, no, babe, you go tell that bitch what you're doing. She'd be ready to fight everybody. I don't like it. Like, I don't like it. At least it. she cares. I know. She'd be ready to square. Like, you know, some people would be, be passive about it and just yeah. be like, well, I mean, it's okay. You'll be all right. You know, you know who you We're are. God's <laughs> it's a and grown the people. man with a deep voice. With his little, you know, he got his beard going thing going or whatever. <laughs> and then in. the thing says Jace. I so I specifically talk before him and be like, oh, I don't know what he would like. I'm trying to hint to you that you have to call this man by the correct pronouns. Like, and then you staring, what you staring at? So I kind of get a little aggressive. So you make it like you make a conscious effort to make sure that even, you introduce him yeah. before he even has to say anything. Even on the first day after I put two and two together, moving forward after that, I always try to, I don't try to, you know, make him feel like he's lesser, but mm-hmm. I do try to talk first and be like, oh, well, I want chicken and waffles. I don't know what he wants. I'm trying to hint to you yeah. that you need to get his pronouns right. Okay. To me, that was like what solidified it in it's the like, beginning. It's like, this the one. Yes. Yeah, because like... <laughs> Ain't <laughs> good pussy. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, because it's like you're with someone who genuinely cares. Mm-hmm. And I think that boldness about her is what helped me come out of my shell. Mm-hmm. The first time I used a men's bathroom, we were together. Because I never felt Ooh. brave enough. to. We were coming out of the movies. And I was like, after this bathroom. She's like, me too. All right, I'll see you when you come out. Yes, so, bitch. So <laughs> I was like... We're not going together? I was like, <laughs> fuck, like, I can't be no bitch. Because we were still like, it was still the beginning. So, like, we mm-hmm. weren't super comfortable where mm-hmm. I could have been like. <sighs> so I was like, well, here we go. <laughs> and, and the so, whole time, like, I was scared. Like, I actually waited a, a minute when he went in there because I was, like, trying to peek through the door. Like, you better not fuck with my nigga. Like, <laughs> I was kind of scared because, like, I know that it happens, but. You don't hear about it enough. Yes. So I didn't want it to be one of those situations where it just so happened to happen to him. Because I would have been swinging in there, yeah. like shoes, sneakers, whatever I wore in there. I'd been chopping off some dicks, okay? Because <laughs> you're not going to do that to my nigga. So I was kind of like hesitant to go into the women's bathroom because I wanted to make sure he was okay in the men's. Okay. So, yeah. So Have you faced anything like that, though? Like Men don't pay adversary? attention enough. Because <sighs> I can say, like... Like, guys just go to the bathroom. Like, yeah. I can say, like, when, even before I started testosterone, I was going in the women's bathroom. Like, women just are naturally and socially mm-hmm. made to be more observant. Mm-hmm. So women are looking, who's walking in yeah. Probably for safety reasons, mostly. That's looking, true. I've had bad experiences in the women's bathroom. Like, you're not supposed to be in here. Bitch, mind your business. <laughs> but, like, never in the Should men's like, bathroom. Should be like, thank you, and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> like, in the men's bathroom, like, Guys barely even talk. Like, you don't want to look because yeah. you don't want to be, like, looking at nobody's dick. Mm-hmm. So you barely make <laughs> eye contact. You just go in the bathroom, come out. Like, and a lot of niggas don't wash their hands. That shit is gross. That is disgusting. So you don't even be standing at the sink looking at each other washing their hands. It's just, like, Hepatitis. mad weird. Exactly. <laughs> See, you can that's get in the bathroom, dirt, too. That's probably dirtier than Chobi. Probably not. It's probably equivalent. <laughs> Men's bathrooms are disgusting, no. too. I told you. <laughs> elegant... <laughs> Executive Palace, please hit up at Rose Mango. She fishing for a sponsorship right now. It could be forty dollars an hour. You get your makeup done and you get a room. Wait, what? Listen, I'm trying. I market myself. Oh, like you're doing your makeup. Oh, you're doing the makeup there. Yeah. Oh, because I was like, Wait, girl, you, you can't let that man. You can't let that man take you to the room and fuck you like that. Let me do your makeup real quick. <laughs> So, uh, you got it. so like the little lady in the bathroom when mm-hmm. you go to the club, you go. I see makeup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we got a business. Uh, mm-hmm. when, I get my, for y'all. when I get my personal training license, we go do squats, and you are gonna get them lashes on this. Acid lashes mm-hmm. by Rhoda Mango. Catfish yes. the fuck out of him. Come yes. on. <laughs> we do it downstairs in the lobby. Work your way up. Exactly. It's a whole new woman. Exactly. <laughs> y'all silly. <laughs> You gotta get this money. Oh my god! <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys for coming in. I really appreciate this conversation. I appreciate how open and honest you guys were. And you know, like I said earlier, I hope this helps someone understand more what it's like. Like even from 
a Caribbean experience or just black experience or transitioning lesbian identifying any spectrum of the conversation that we had today so I just really want to thank you guys um y'all are awesome I might actually go follow you on Twitter now <laughs> cause I'm not friendly cause I was like oh that's her nigga okay that's cool I follow her I ain't friendly I'm finna go at him I don't know him it's like mm. I see what you tweet because she retweets something or reply to something I'm like oh that's him okay he seemed funny he cool tweet horrible stuff <laughs> and I have to check him yeah, anyway, just be like, well, you know, all right, that's that's what's up. <laughs> so, again, cloud by association, etc. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, please don't forget, like every other week, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Everything is pointless talks. You guys want to um, plug yourselves? You guys want any follows or anything like that? Yo, yo, yo! It's your girl, Ro. <laughs> 305 Day County. 305 hey. Day County. Die. Um, um. I blanked out for a second. Okay, so um, That's my handle. That's the I was talking about nah, on the Metro movie. <laughs> but no, um, my handle is Roll the Mango. You know, I do a lot of stuff, too much stuff. But um, the basis of my, you know, platform is makeup, fitness. Um, watch out for your girl, because you're going live. We're on our way. Don't you lift like 300 pounds or something like that? You I mean. I saw something there. I was just like, she lifting a grown man. As of last things? night. I deadlift um, 320. Oh, yeah. And then that's leg press. I'm sorry. Leg press was 320. And then the deadlift is like 175. My weight. My weight 175. Yeah. Healthy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like an ox. <laughs> it's sturdy. It's like a stallion. <laughs> it's like a stallion. Anyway, mm. um, I'm at Johnny Proton. If anybody, you know, in the trans community, you want to reach out, you need somebody to talk to. Um, I don't do any makeup or no shit like that. <laughs> I'm just here for the community. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm here for the community. You need anyone to talk to. You know, you feel alone or whatever. My DMs are always open. Um, I'm really responsive. So I'm Johnny Proton on everything. IG, Twitter, Snapchat. Um, just hit me up and we'll we'll get through it. And watch out for my man's swimming trunks that he being too humble about. Because when the swimming trunks drop, you're going to drop dick in the ocean. Because I know y'all be fucking in that water because y'all nasty. Okay. So watch out for the swimming trunks. They're going to have like colorful designs or whatever. Please, on little dolphins. Don't put dropping dick on my <laughs> bread. Please ignore her. We won't be dropping but those. But you trans men, right? It is. Yes. So they can pack. Okay. All right. Wow. <laughs> I was trying to encourage you. Yeah, but. Because you was humbly leaving that part out and I was waiting for you to drop it. I plugged it earlier. I mean, you plug it again. Plugged, okay. Don't forget. She need to be your manager. <laughs> Publicist. She gonna, she gonna make the tag like, drop a dick in the ocean. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> Fuck the bitch in the Atlantic. <laughs> Absolutely. Miami Beach. All that. Hashtag Miami Beach. All that. Pride lines. All that. All of that. <laughs> Again, thank you guys for listening. And, you know, every other week we come in and we discuss topics, um, whether you got here on purpose or by fate. Thank you for tuning in. And you guys have a good day, good night, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera.